Now you've seen a whole bunch of different types in C-sharp and all the ones I feel that are important to then learn any other type going forward, it's important you know some of the basics about these foundation types. Let's check if you were paying attention and jump into the test. So let's see if we can score 100% today. The first question is, what are the two kind of types in C-sharp? Is it value and simple types? Reference and value types? Or value and integral types? This was covered at the start of the video. You have 10 seconds, let me know your answer. Let's see how you do. And the answer is reference and value types. I mentioned the reference types are more like shortcuts to files. You don't edit a reference directly, it points to another type. And value types store their value directly in their location. So they are just standard types. Next, what is the range limit of a byte? Is it 1 to 256, 0 to 255, or 0 to 256? Now I did mention it was important to remember this specific type and its size, so I hope you get this one right. And the range limit is 0 to 255. If you remember, there's 256 possible options due to it having 8 bits. And 0 being a value in code, a, a possible option, the 256th option, if you think of it that way, is the 0. That's why we don't get to 256, because 0 is also an option. It's 1 to 255, which is 255 different options, but we also represent 0 in code, so we have the 0 as well. 1 to 256 would still be 256 options, but then we wouldn't be able to represent 0. And 0 to 256 is 257 possible options. Next up, what does the U stand for in U short? Is it unsigned, unique, or under? Now I'm hoping you all get this one right. We did mention it many times. And you should also know the meaning of the word and why it is called what it's called. So let me know your answer. And the answer is unsigned, because the sign is the minus sign. And by saying unsigned, the un meaning to not have the sign, it's unsigned, there is no sign. So it's self-explanatory. Then we have unique, which simply means one of a kind, and under, which I threw in there, in case some of you thought that the under meant the negative value. But hopefully, you all got this question right. This next one should be easy too. What does unsigned mean? Does it mean the number can be positive and negative? The number can only be negative, or the number can only be positive. Now I practically gave this answer away just, but let's see if you get this one. Think again on what unsigned means and make sure you don't trip up. And of course it means the number can only be positive. When there is no negative sign, it's unsigned, it cannot be negative, therefore it has to be positive. Now some of you may have made this mistake and simply put that it can only be negative because you weren't quite thinking along the right lines. The fact that it's got sign in the name and un, all kind of negative inclinations might have made you think negative numbers. So it's important to make sure you remember unsigned means there is no sign and it's only positive. Now this one should be easy for those that pay close attention and do the extra work in the lessons to make sure they understand every part. What is the approximate range of an int? Is it 2 million, 4 million, or 4 billion? And this isn't the minimum and maximum values, it's the total range, the number of possible options an integer can have. And the answer is 4 billion. You can go approximately negative 2 billion to positive 2 billion. So the maximum overall range is 4 billion. Next up, what do you call the type that stores fractional numbers? Is it a fractional point number, floating point number, or decimal number? So this is what we call the group of all types that can store fractional numbers. Now 
and the answer is floating point numbers. They store fractional numbers, however in C-sharp we call these floating point numbers because the point can float depending on the accuracy of the number that we are trying to define. Decimal is a type of floating point number along with float and double and fractional point numbers doesn't really make sense because it's a fractional number not a fractional point. So hopefully most of you got that right. This one will be interesting. Will this compile? Is it yes or no? Now look at the number of digits in this number but also remember what I taught in the lesson. I'm expecting you to all get this right, but this one may trip you up. And the answer is yes, it will compile. As I mentioned with the floating point numbers, one of the common mistakes and common hurdles is that C-sharp allows you to create, include, and set floating point numbers with values that far exceed their capabilities of storing that information accurately. So even though this will happily compile, the value of my float right after this point will likely just be zero. It will simply round down the insignificant one to zero and the whole number will become zero. But it will compile. This next one's a little bit more tricky. Will any data loss occur with this statement? Is it yes or no? Now I've made counting the digits easy because I've made them 1 to 9, then 0 and 1. So there are 11 digits. If you can remember the accuracy of a floating point number, you should get this one right. And the answer is yes, data loss will occur. Floating point numbers are only good for around 6 to 9 digits. Most commonly, it's safe to presume only 6 digits of accuracy, which means this number would likely round up to 1.123457. It may round up to 568 or 679 depending on the rest of the number. There will definitely be data loss because it cannot store the additional 0 and 1. If you wanted to store this number you should store it in at least a double or a decimal so that data loss doesn't occur. What do we call the truthly type value? Is it a bit? a boo or a bool. Now I'm hoping you get this right, I did cover it quite substantially as well as you've written the actual variable type. And the answer is a bool. It's short for boolean and it comes from George Boole who invented boolean logic. And boolean simply means truthly, it's true or false. A bit can represent a truthly value because it can only be a 0 or a 1, effectively yes or no, true or false, but that isn't a type. The, the type itself is bool. And boo is in there just in case people can't understand my accent and I need to make sure people understand what I'm saying. Let's make this next question a little bit harder and test those that are paying attention. What does size of return? Is it the size of the given type in bits, the size of the value stored in the type, or the size of the given type in bytes? Now this is very specific, but there is only one answer, and we did cover this, so let's see what you get. And the answer is the size of the given type in bytes. Size of accepts a type, and it will return the size of that type as an integer value so as a whole number, for example 1, meaning 1 byte. If it returns 4, it means 4 bytes. We can turn this into the number of bits as we did in the lesson by multiplying the result by 8 because there are 8 bits in a byte, but size of doesn't return the bits, it returns the bytes. The size of the value stored in the type is an invalid statement because types can't store values, variables can. A variable can be of a certain type, and then we could find out the size of the variable, but size of in this case is not used for that. Size of is used to find the size of types, not variables. And last but not least, how do we create a character literal? Is it with the equal sign, with double quotes, 
or with single quotes. Now we did this at the end of the lesson and hopefully you will all get this one right. And the answer is using single quotes. If you remember rightly, a character literal is a value itself, such as one is an integer literal. 1.5 is a double literal. The literal means an actual value. So to create a character, for example, A, we place the letter A inside single quotes. We then use the equals sign to assign that to a variable, and double quotes is used for creating a string literal, not a character. So hopefully you all did well on that test, and you are getting used to the tests and used to paying attention with the lessons, and making sure you understand all the steps. Again, if you didn't get everything right, feel free to go back and rewatch the lesson, and try to score 100% on all tests. This makes sure that the foundation lessons that we are going through now, the core knowledge of the rest of the language is well understood. Once you have the core knowledge, everything else will be easy. So make sure you understand all of these steps completely.